And we are joined now by Sergeant Shamar Thomas, who's in our New York studio. Sergeant Thomas, uh, watching that video, you look angry, you're shouting, and it seems, though, like police are listening. What made you so angry? Uh, how you doing, Christine? Um, what made me angry was uh, to, to see the police hurting unarmed protesters that I haven't seen, um, you know, become violent with the police or, you know, or, um, you know, uh, or dangerous to anybody else that was in the populace. These were peaceful protesters, as you mentioned. Um, this was one of the reasons that the Occupy Wall Street movement got so much coverage and, and really gained in support because of what we saw, police using their batons, police using pepper spray. In this video that we've seen on YouTube, you're saying, if you want to fight, go to Iraq, go to Afghanistan. Um, what do you mean by this? Well, what I meant by it was that, you know, this country has an ongoing war that, you know, I don't necessarily agree with, I don't agree with, actually. Uh, but, you know, to hurt the citizens that you swear to protect, you know, is, is, is kind of, a, you know, a contradiction to the oath that you take as, you know, a police officer to, you know, be uh, courteous and professional. Sort of a contrast, of course, um, with what you were dealing with. Tell us a little bit about your service. I know that you were, um, I believe, in Fallujah in Iraq. And also you come from a long line of military people in your family, uh, just cross generations. Talk a little bit about this. I mean, you... Uh, and your parents, your grandparents have been fighting for freedom. Put that into perspective with what you have seen in New York on Occupy Wall Street protests. Um, well, uh, my mother, she, she did uh, 20 years in the military. Um, I grew up on military bases, you know, all across the United States. And uh, my grandfather, he was a director of Veterans Affairs in New York City. My uh, great-grandfather was a Navy cook in World War II. You know, he faced discrimination. Um, so I've, I've lived all over the world, all over the country, you know, uh, because of my parents, you know, being in the military. So I've always had that, you know, um, uh, pride in my country and, and what we're about. You know, I've always thought the, uh, that America was the greatest country in the world. and. The constitution that we have is, you know, one of the best. But as I, I as I served in Iraq, I, I started, you know, seeing things that, you know, uh, that were unjust as far as, you know, why we were there, what we were doing there. We were there to win the hearts and minds. I was uh, involved in a, a, a riot in Iraq where the the local populace threw rocks at us. And after the uh, after the rock throwing was done, we didn't, you know, go in the crowd and start uh, beating and arresting people. So to come back to my own country uh, and see the police doing this to the people that I, I went to Iraq to protect, you know, was, um, you know, a big contradiction. And, you know, I, I, I'm not going to stand for it. Uh, my family, you know, is totally supportive of what I'm doing and this whole movement because, you know, they served, you know, uh, over 60 plus years in the military. And, you know, they're still struggling to get by and still struggling to, uh, you know, uh, make ends meet and, you know, in, in this economy. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, you know, they're not self-reliant. I don't understand. I, I can't see how uh, 60 plus years in the military is not self-reliant. So, you know, as a part of the 99 percent, you know, I, th I think it's my duty as a leader, you know, as somebody who, you know, chose to protect and serve this country to, you know, continue my job. You know, it's not a, a, a oath that I take lightly and that stopped once I left the Marine Corps. Uh, some really interesting things you said there. Uh, first of all, being in Iraq, having uh, people actually threaten your safety and you not lashing out to them and coming back and seeing uh, this behavior by police has got to be frustrating. Uh, let me ask you, because I, I watched this video a few times and it, you kind of, I looked in the police's eye, the police officer's eyes, I looked at their faces. They're not only listening, it seems like they're thinking about what you're saying. Take us back to that day. What was the reaction by these police officers who were standing around and, um, you know, were they digesting what you were saying? From my personal opinion, I, I believe that it was a mixture of, um, you know, not understanding what to do. And then, you know, they started understanding what I was saying. And I, th I think it started resonating with them that, you know, they really do have a duty and that that badge doesn't give them, you know, the right to hurt hurt these people 
And I think that it took a person like myself, you know, who, who has led and, and has uh, been through the trials and tribulations of war and understands what it, what it feels like to be in a, you know, an actual riot where people don't like you, you know, to speak out a, against it. And um, I think more veterans around the United States should, you know, come out and, and help, uh, not even the United States because this is uh, global, but, you know, they should go out and, and help these protesters and, uh, you know, give them a voice. Certainly, uh, you look nothing like the uh, dirty hippies we keep hearing are uh, part of this movement on Wall Street and on main streets around the country. Um, I want to ask you, today an important announcement came down, of course, by President Obama that all U.S. troops will be leaving Iraq by the end of this country. Uh, when you heard that today, uh, uh, sorry, at the end of the year, uh, when you heard that today, what was your reaction? Well, I just heard that, that news a few hours ago. I was, I'm, I'm shocked and amazed, and I applaud President Obama in doing that. We should have been going a long time ago. I hope he uh, uh, decides to uh, stop the war in Afghanistan and all other countries that we're involved in, because um, coming home to America, I don't see how, you know, the war has changed, you know, our way of life. Uh, the economy is not better, you know, people's attitudes about the wars are not better, and it, it just doesn't make any sense to, you know, continue losing innocent lives of, you know, uh, you know uh, America's youth, you know? But put this in a little bit of perspective for me. Of course, uh, one of the main uh, demands, one of the main protests by people on Occupy Wall Street is that this system change. You have served your country, you said your parents have served this country, and this struggle is hitting you personally in that things are not easy for you. You're having trouble finding a job. Um, the war in Iraq might be ending for real this time. Uh, but talk about what you see ahead in this country and what you really think needs to change, especially in light of some of those things you were yelling at Occupy Wall Street. Well, what I feel about it is that every American has something that they feel, you know, is wrong with the government, and we're all right. That's why they, there's no one clear message to the Occupy Wall Street movement, which is global, because we uh, globally we all have issues with the one percent, you know, uh, you know, destroying the world for the rest of us. So, you know, uh, this is the this is our opportunity to voice, you know, our opinions. And um, people need to take this opportunity and go support their local occupation because we can't leave it into the hands of senators and, and congressmen or, you know, uh, higher echelon government officials to just one day wake up and fix everything. We have to use our voices. Everything that you feel about what's going on with your government is right, and you need to go out there and voice it. Without you going down and supporting, you, you will never be heard. You will, people will continue to... Um, you know, uh, control our lives. They control the air we breathe, the water we drink, and we need to have a say in that. And without them going down to support, and we will never have a say. So, um, but my, the biggest thing that I would say uh, that I feel is that the people that actually, you know, put their blood, sweat, and tears into this country need to be the ones that are benefiting from this country. We have a lot of people in this country, you know, that are not getting up at 6 a.m. cleaning the streets or going to war zones, uh, fighting for their lives for, you know, $1,900 a month, and then they come home and, you know, they have nothing but, you know, a GI Bill to go to college where once you get out of college, you know, your, your odds of getting a job are still slim. So I think we need to just overall just go out and support and, and voice your own opinions because, you know, I'm just one person and I'm just a part of the 99%. I'm just, I just want to inspire people and veterans to go out and, and protect these people. Well, it certainly sounds like you are inspiring people, Shamar. Um, uh, you said you thought maybe your words were resonating with police. It seems like they're resonating uh, with people who are clicking on this video. Um, almost two million hits. Maybe, maybe by now it's been two million hits on this video. Why do you think so many people are watching this? I think so many people are watching is, is, is the words that I say and, and the, the, the passion and the emotion that I have. Like I tell people all the time, um, it's a difference when you do something and then when you love something. I have a passion for this country. I've lived my whole life, you know, um, uh, around the world on army bases where I've been surrounded by people who are passionate Americans who are very patriotic. So that, that patriotic blood runs through my veins and I, I um, you know, I'm trying to inspire people because it's like, you know, why don't you care? Why, why, why continue to allow the things that you know are wrong to continue happening? We need to do something about it, and somebody, somebody has to voice their opinion. 
Certainly a question a lot of people are asking. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Iraq War veteran Sergeant Shamar Thomas.